the elders of the village follow Kutigura and her husband, Abanaji. Today is a special day for the couple. They are going to move out of their house and build a new home, and they are having a ceremony for it today. The husband, Abanaji, takes out two chickens and gives them to the chief of Terra, who is in charge of the village. When the chief of Terra, Kurasi Beju, then allows them to build a house. Next, they scatter the blood of the chicken on the ground and pray to the gods of heaven and earth for health and prosperity. When the village women start to sing with their water jars, they start building the house. Everyone pours water onto the sand. Then they knead the mud. Make the mud bricks. And start to pile them up. The entire process requires mud, water, and the labor of everyone in the village. Six days later, a round-shaped house with smooth curves appears. 60-year-old Abangiga displays his special skills. He begins to knead mud and straw to make a karnari, which is used for storing peanuts and corn. The elderly of this village also work to build the houses. They own the land together, and that's why they all participate in building the house. <laughs> the sun comes up early in the morning. and the building starts to look like a house. Now the women get busy.
After they bring the mud, pour water on top of it and knead it together, they mix in the most important ingredient of all. <laughs> This ingredient is cow dung. When mixed with mud, the cow dung maximizes the adhesiveness of the mud with its rich fibers. Cow dung is not just excrement, but nature's cement. When they put the cow dung mixed with water into the mud dough and knead it again, they get the secondary mixture. People in this region call this mixture of mud and cow excrement banco. The only tool used to finish the wall is the hands of women. The rough wall turns smooth and sleek while these women rub it. Weuba and Akiaga are doing something else. They carve animals that the villagers worship into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the crocodile is the god of water, and people worship it for rain so that they can have a good harvest. <laughs> They carve a boa snake into the walls of the guest room. The boa is also a water god, and they believe it takes disease and worries away. After they finish the house, the women work on the chicken coop. Evening comes, and Kutigura and Abanagi prepare dinner. The couple builds a hut like this and lives here until the house is completed for them. It's a type of ritual to the earth god, telling the god that they are going to live there, and also an old custom of the Gurunsi tribe. It has been 20 days since the Kutigura couple began to build the house. The next morning, Abanagi, the new owner of the house, is busy putting a roof on top of the barn. Eighty-year-old Abase weaves weeds and creates a nice entrance gate. Abangiga is almost finished with his carnari after 20 days of mixing the mud and straw, kneading the dough and drying it. And now, one of the most important processes begins.
The village women begin to beat the ground with a club called simpare after they sprinkle the mixture of cow dung and water. This will harden the ground. It is the only way they can prevent rain from seeping in and keep out the worms from underneath. Women have adapted to the rough conditions of Africa. Their work turns into dancing and singing of delightful melodies. This is the work song of Africa. Women beat the earth, and again the earth gives life. Dawa Dawa is a perennial tree easily found in West Africa. It blooms flowers in January and bean sprout like fruits in April and the shells of these fruits become the necessary material for building the house. When boiled, a thick brownish liquid comes out of the dawa dawa fruit shell. They cover the surface with this to make it waterproof. It's a natural lacquer. <laughs> On one side, women begin to pound with excellent skill. They call this black soil kandua jun, and it becomes a natural pigment when mixed with water. The smooth and whitish stone called Panduyad Poon is a natural wax. Now, all the women become artists. They learned their art from the plains of Africa and Mother Nature, and also from their own mothers and their mother's mothers. The beautiful lines and colors come from their aesthetic senses. Building 
a house requires the entire strength of the community. And together they all pray for the health and happiness of the family. They create beauty from earth, water, trees, and sunlight. Humankind has lived in mud houses for thousands of years, and 30% of the world's population still live in mud houses. Building houses with mud is recovering the precious assets and traditions of humankind. And a long journey awaits to the place where the sun and winds dwell and all life breathes together.